I saw this film originally halfway through. And I turned it on, and it was in the middle of a sex scene. And um, Julie Delpy is getting on, uh, trying to get on top of her boyfriend. And he's saying, for God's sake, why are you always on top of me? I can't bear it. You just, this is how you have your orgasm. Why can't you just let me do what I want to do? And she said, I feel so sorry for men. They're always so dominated by women. I, feel like... I thought, what is this film? <laughs> I had, um, I don't think I'd ever seen a sex scene portrayed, the woman sort of demanding what she wanted and the man feeling offended and feeling um, sort of got at by her. And then she got out, got out of bed and he put a thermometer in his mouth and she said, don't use that thermometer, it's been... An, and he spits... And, it, blah, blah. <laughs> and um, so I was, I was interested by it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was interested... What interests me is detail. Um, because when you're acting in films or, or, or television, it's frustrating when you feel that it hasn't been... That the, the, how people actually are, how people actually live, is slightly is, is is skirted over in the moment. So often people are worrying about your hair or worrying whether you put this thing down in the same place or not, and continuity becomes a problem. And da, da. and I feel, for just purely a selfish point of view, is that then where we've lost the reality, and what's the point in acting unless we are obsessed with reality? Um, Although, of course, as I'm talking, you can probably think of hundreds of films that have nothing to do with reality, which are brilliant. But um, it's just what I eke out. It's what I see. It's what I sense. And when I f feel a film has skirted over something that, uh, uh, just for the sake of um, ease or the sake of things being sort of easily achieved, for uh, the slightly bumpier road of reality, then I slightly lose interest. So I stuck with this, this film. And, um, and then I realized that Julie Delpy had directed, starred in, written and composed, edited, done absolutely everything, which you'd have thought might be a bad sign, but actually turned out. And cast her parents? Yes, yeah, she cast her parents, yeah. And probably made the baguettes as well. Yes, and that cat must definitely be hers too, mustn't it? Indeed, I think so. And probably the thermometer. But also her... <laughs> <laughs> and, and her ex-boyfriend plays the boyfriend oh, yeah. in this. yeah. So, uh, so when you watched it halfway through, did yeah. you watch it on DVD or did you go back and watch it? I think it must have just been on television. And then I went back maybe and downloaded it and watched it again. This was a couple of years ago. And then since, since I knew I was going to do this talk, then I've watched it a couple of times since. And you also said that Julie called you the other day? She did, yeah. Um, How did that come about then? Well, Rachel, who I can see who works in my agent's office, I said, please get hold of Julie Delpy. And then she wrote back saying, Julie, Julie might respond. We got her publicist said she might get in touch. And I thought, and then I wrote back saying that means that she never gets in touch and that she can't be bothered to respond to emails, which I, I get. Um, then she, uh, but she did get in touch. And we were, on a, we were in a traffic jam on, on uh, going past Stonehenge. And the phone rang. I was holding it in my hand. She said she'd ring at five. I said to my husband, she'll never ring at five. Whoever rings when they say they will. And I was like, bring, bring, it rang at five. <laughs> we had to sort of veer off the A303, and we ended up in the MOD, because it's all military down there, isn't it? <laughs> so there I was sitting on this sunny day next to a tank, um, talking to Julie, which was fantastic. What did you say? Well, I thought, I didn't really know, not, unlike you, I'm not an interviewer, so I couldn't think what I could ask her that was sort of intelligent. So then I thought, I will go through all the things that I like about her film. And of course, that was quite a good approach because yeah. she was easily flattered, as all actors are. So, so tell us what you like about the film, then. Well, and what, and what she, she said about it. Well, what I like... Actually, the thing about her casting her parents... I mean, they are actors, I think, the parents, yeah. but maybe don't work that much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What I, in the 60s, they worked a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I like, I have always been interested in the amateur and the professional mixing. It just is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a concoction that interests me. So she has, so it is, it is slightly makeshift when they're in it. They're maybe not always, you might not think they're the best performances. But what it gives, so you, you give the sort of smoothness of a professional actress like her against the sort of roughness of a slightly unprofessional actress like her mother. And, um, and I think it's an exciting mix. It's, it is, it's a bit amateurish. And, uh, and I like the roughness. I like the collision of that. I like the mess of that. 
Um, I didn't say that I thought her mother wasn't an excellent actress. <laughs> when I <thought> <laughs> um, it's a rom-com. And uh, I like... I, the first thing I said to her was that I like the lightness of touch with which this couple are constantly arguing when it could become sort of heavy and annoying like arguments do and people could take offence and then it could all sort of become a bit boring. But she keeps this tone, she keeps this lightness, which I think is, I think for me it's a very Jewish comedic thing. It's sort of curb your enthusiasm, it's this Woody Allen... Yep. And I like the delivery of quite serious relationship problems, but delivered in a sort of lightness, with a lightness of touch. And I feel she really gets that, although you said you found it irritating. Yes. Yeah, well, there you are. <laughs> After I chose this film, it then turns out everyone finds it irritating. So I'm sorry. Sorry about Just it. the first 50 minutes, and yeah. then, then I liked it. <laughs> I said that. to him, when did you find the film interesting? And he cited one of the last scenes in the film. <laughs> <laughs> it was early in there. But it, you say it's a, it's a rom-com. It's a kind of rom-com about people breaking up rather than getting together. I, oh, I, that's true. And it, um, it's the difficult two-year period. And it seemed to me to be talking about, in our age that people are together now purely because we choose to be together. We don't get put into arranged marriages. Most of us, some of us do, don't, some don't. But in our culture, when things aren't arranged, and if you choose not to be with somebody, you get divorced, whatever. That, so what is it that keeps you with each other? And I thought that what they're going through in the film is what's so easily... It's, to me, it seemed very recognisable that you know you don't get you don't understand the culture of your boyfriend's parents things the you get upset jealousy it's a film about jealousy somebody upsets you so much they're so flirtatious with somebody else they've maybe been unfaithful and these things hurt you so personally so deeply that you can't continue in the relationship well of course there was a time when that was not an issue in marriage you weren't going to be able to get out of the marriage whether you were hurt or not and so i find Julie's examination of that interesting, the negotiation of that, and it ends up with them with the film really, I feel, feel movingly going into that awful time when you're arguing with somebody and you're you're suddenly thinking, are we going to break up? I mean, who doesn't know that? Is this it? Have we gone through these two years of loving each other and to suddenly lose it like that? And I felt for me, I felt it was very romantic and touching. And then the actor, Adam Goldberg, who I think is a brilliant actor. I don't know why we don't see him more, except I assume he might be quite a difficult man. <laughs> um, and then he sort of breaks down at the end, and I thought that's very exposing of him as an actor to do that. And then Julie told me on the phone that he felt castrated by the film. <laughs> So I thought when I, I said that's interesting because I think he does go quite far in the bearing of something about him it is quite revealing and in a way that most male actors might not want to be portrayed. Mm. Um, did she talk about her character in it? Because, you, you know, you could easily see it's Judy Delpy and she says that she talks a lot, but all the hypochondria is her hypochondria she gave to the character of Jack. Um, yes. So what did she say about... Marianne. Well, she said she's very, she's extremely flirtatious in the film, and she can't stop flirting with everyone she meets. She said the film was about. She said it was about her empathy she had for men, when that deep down at a sort of primeval level, men are terribly worried about whether the woman's really carrying their child. So that jealousy about the woman being flirtatious is completely, it makes a man feel terrified and deeply out of control. And she said, because of course in the film she's doing nothing wrong. And you're like, really, Julie? Because you do flirt with everyone you meet. Would you like that if your boyfriend did that? Um, so she was rather like her character on the phone. Well, she was like, so, you know, in the, in the film, she, he, she says she's given a guy a blowjob, and she says, it's just a blowjob. What's that? She's, you know, just a blowjob. What's the interest in that? <laughs> and he says, well, it was a blowjob that brought down the last chance America had for democracy. <laughs> Before Obama. So it dates it a bit. Yeah. Uh, she also equated Marion to Jake LaMotta and Raging Bull. She did? Yes. She, she said that on the phone. Well, except, is that Joe Pesky who plays that part? No, it's Robert De Niro. 
the Robert De Niro oh, Ray, sorry, 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 Raging Bull. She actually said it was Joe Pesky that oh, she okay. was homage to. Uh, she's, she's fierce and angry, and she is quite fierce. Yeah, so that's another interesting thing about the film. So she goes along, you think you're watching this very cute French actress sort of placating her boyfriend and flirting with everyone, and then suddenly she loses her temper. She's got no control over her temper at all. She starts Nazis saluting the racist um, taxi driver. There's, there's a great scene, well, there's a few scenes with taxi drivers in this movie. That <laughs> taxi drivers are brilliantly written, and they're brilliantly acted. Yeah. This film was made for 500,000 euros. It's nothing, is it? In 20 days. In 20 days. Yeah, so uh, it's sometimes brilliant things. See, private lives, I'm not, I'm not trying to promote my play, <laughs> but actually was written in two weeks. And sometimes people writing things very, very quickly and executing things very, very quickly. I know the last film they talked about take, f took five years to make, didn't it? Yeah. Which also, there's a point in that of two, of course. But to do something very, very quickly without thinking too much about it can have brilliant uh, effects. But I think she plays angry very, very well, and her eye does go sort of slightly demented. And he says to her, you get that crazy look in your eye, and she does. The what? And, Sorry. Well, the, the, she said the, the Joe Pesky thing is that she calms down. I think this is very good acting. She gets furiously angry, and then she says to her boyfriend, don't worry, I've got everything under control. She goes back to being normal. And then she turns, being very furiously angry again. And then she thinks everything's calmed down, and we, the audience, think it's over. And then she leaps out of her skin to grab the guy again. And um, I like her doing that. It's surprising. <laughs> she surprises you, I think. Mm. But it's also good because both the French and the Americans get equal abuse in the movie. <laughs> She's quite even-handed with that. Yeah. She's very funny about the French being so dirty, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> She, she really gets that sort of, sort of slightly skanky thing about, about the, the flat where she lives. It's covered in uh, mold. And her boyfriend has, has got endless allergies. And she says, no, no, the mold is good for you. It's like cheese. <laughs> Green cheese growing on the wood, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so she's very funny about that, about the French. I think she really sort of, uh, she hits, she hits a, an accurate note. Mm. She, she, in one interview, she said that she watched Jaws four times yeah. before making this film because Frenchmen are like sharks. <laughs> Any Frenchmen in the house today? What, 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 because they're circling their prey all the time. <laughs> and then they're eating them. Well, actually, there is this theme, in the, which I didn't notice for a while. There is the jealousy theme music. Did, did you notice that? Yes. No, because you had to watch it about 100 times when you noticed <laughs> that. Um, but when he gets jealous and upset, she writes all the music. And you hear this, dum, 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 dum. And I said, oh, what was that music? I was trying to work out what it was. And she said, it's the, it's the Jaws music, which it is. Yeah. And so that's clever. She feeds that in. Uh, the, because, of course, when you feel jealousy, it is an out-of-control, murderous thing that's so deep and you don't... And, she, and so it sort of almost sets a slight sort of thriller feeling to, to the film. Mm. Did you think that? What? <laughs> <laughs> Towards the end, yeah. Um, <laughs> So what else did she, she say to you on the phone about this? Well, those scenes that you're talking about that I think really make the film good, the, the angry scenes, um, she starts to accuse. She goes to a, a restaurant and she sees an old boyfriend of hers who's a sort of bourgeois French Parisian. And she says, this is slightly giving it away, it doesn't matter. No. She says that he's, he dumped her in order to go to Thailand to have sex with 12-year-olds. 12 year, 12 and she starts, she can't keep it in. She starts to rage and rage and rant at him. And that's when she, she goes at him again and again. And I thought, he's rather brilliant, that actor. You really do believe that he is the sort of right. And she said that the French um, finan financiers tried to get her to remove these, film, these scenes, which really are what makes the film. They give it its gravitas. They give it its seriousness. You know, she's really dealing with uh, racism in France. Um, she's dealing with um, the... The, um, the sort of underside of sexuality, the French being so free and open sexually, and yet at the same time that could allow them to say, well, it's fine, that is their culture, we can go and have, you know. So she's addressing serious issues. And those are the issues they wanted to take out. They said, you can't have these issues in a comedy. And she stood her ground. And she said, luckily in France, they have to do what the director says. She said that with such pride. And so they had to stick with it. They had to stick with her vision which, of course, the film would be much less if she'd let go. Mm. But she said she had to really, really fight to keep what you then think, in hindsight, are the sort of best scenes in the film, aren't they? Yeah, she says the French hate those scenes and the Americans love them, so... <laughs> oh, does she say that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the French don't like to be reminded of... Yeah, they uh, hate to the be criticised. 
That's I wonder how she likes being criticised. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a lot, I shouldn't think. Uh, so one, one final question, uh, and then we'll let the audience see the movie. Um, has this inspired you to do something similar? I mean, 20 Days, Actor Friends, Streets of London. Yes, with your iPhone. <laughs> You can. Sometimes when they're making so much fuss about filming you and you've got the camera and the grip and you've got all this going on, you think, well, why don't they just give that actor an iPhone? And they can film me and I'll, f I'll film them. <laughs> <laughs> so jobs would yes. go, of course. Yeah. Um, but then they wouldn't be so tired, the crew, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it is inspiring. I mean, it is unusual. I mean, there's, there's, there's is she called Laura Dunnan? Uh, Girl, Lena. 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 So there is that thing of girls, uh, 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 of there is her, her who's written about herself and exposed herself. But I think to write and direct, I mean, to do everything that she did, is, it's got to be inspiring. Um, and the script, which you feel is so improvised, is written completely 95% she's, her, she's written herself. So I think just purely from that point of view, it is incredibly inspiring. And yes, I think I think well, if maybe if she can do it, then 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 why couldn't I? Yeah. On that, uh, please put your hands together for Anna Chancellor. <laughs> <laughs>